Annotation planes are an important part of model-based definition because they help you get your annotations to look the way that you want them to on your model. And the important thing about annotation planes is that they help you define the orientation of the annotation, but not necessarily the location. The location is actually going to be placed on a plane parallel to your annotation plane based on the first reference that you select. So you could end up having the annotation plane define both the orientation and the location, but again, internally, Creole Parametric is going to create its own parallel plane as necessary. Let's take a look at our annotations. So the way that you get to them is from the Annotate tab, and here you see the annotation planes, and there are seven that automatically come with your model. And first we'll take a look at flat to screen, and when I hover my mouse over here, you see that I get a green grid indicating the plane that I would be creating annotations on, and we have a red arrow pointing to the right indicating the text direction, and there's actually a blue arrow pointing into the screen. We only see the back end of that blue arrow, and that blue arrow indicates the viewing direction, or viewing into the computer screen. So I use flat to screen annotations a lot for putting notes in my model. For example, I can click the note command and here we have an attached note and I could drop a note in the upper corner of my screen and I'm gonna have this note say mass and then I can use ampersand and use the pro MP mass parameter and then when I click on the background of the screen, now I have a flat to screen note that is reporting the mass of this particular model. And we'll come back later and take a look at some of the different options for using flat to screen annotations. Our other predefined annotation planes are based off of our default datum planes. Let me turn on my datum plane visibility. So here is the datum plane front. When I hover my mouse over front, you can see that grid that defines the initial orientation of our annotation plane. And again, we have the green, excuse me, the red arrow indicating the text direction and the blue arrow indicating the viewing direction. Let me click on the front plane in order to activate it. And then we have this button called Active Annotation Plane. And when I click on it, it's going to reorient my model corresponding with that annotation plane. So again, we can see the green grid, we can see the red arrow for the text orientation, and let me rotate slightly out of here. You can see there is a blue arrow, and the blue arrow is the viewing direction for that annotation plane. And front, well, quite obviously the opposite of front is back. You'll notice that it has still the front datum plane as the initial location for the grid, and the red arrow for the text viewing direction is flipped, as well as the blue arrow indicating the viewing direction. And similarly, let me zoom out a little bit. Here we have top, and with top you can see again the green grid, the red arrow for the text direction, and the blue arrow for the viewing direction. Again, I can click on it and go to active annotation plane, and it reorients the model as such. And similarly, just like back was the opposite of front, well, bottom is the opposite of top, and we have the same thing for the right annotation plane and the left annotation plane. And for these different annotations, you can right click on different ones and you can get your command. So you could use this to set it as the active annotation plane instead of just clicking on it. You could also choose to remove it from gallery. So for example, let's say that I know that I'm never going to use this one and I don't want it listed on the ribbon. I can remove it and then I could put one of my custom ones in there instead. And I'll show you the custom ones in a moment. And besides that, you could right click and use this to create a new one, to edit one of the existing ones or to delete it entirely from the model. Let's take a look at creating our own custom annotation planes. The way that you do that in Creo Parametric 6.0 is you click on the Annotation Planes Overflow and you have the Annotation Plane Manager. 
I want to point out that in earlier versions of Creo Parametric, I believe it's like 4.0 and earlier, I can't remember when they actually changed it, it was a little hidden. Instead of having this drop down arrow to get to it, there was a little arrow pointing sort of like down into the right over in the side here. And it's really hard to know that, hey, that was actually a button in order to bring up the annotation plane manager. So let's click on it. And here's our annotation plane manager. And it's got the list of the seven different annotation planes that automatically come with the default template. And since we removed bottom from the gallery, its checkbox for gallery display is cleared. If you check it again, well, it's going to end up coming back. But again, you can say, hey, I don't want that one or that one in there because maybe I'm going to display one of my custom ones. Speaking of which, let's take a look at how to create a custom one. So for example, in this part, I have this angled surface. Maybe I want to use this angled surface for some annotations that I want to create. So let's click the new button and here's the annotation plane definition dialog box and you can change the name which I highly recommend that you do. I'm not going to do it at this point because to be honest I am not feeling original to think of what I would call that plane. So here you could use one of the model orientations so you could use one of your saved views so you could set up a saved view first or instead like I'm going to do I'm going to choose to do it flat or excuse me, use a reference plane, and I'll pick this planar surface to define it. And now, if we take a look, we have our blue arrow for the viewing direction. That's good, but if I wanted to view in the other direction, I could click flip, and you can see how it's changing the direction of the blue arrow. But I want to look right onto that plane, so the viewing direction is correct. However, the text orientation isn't the way that I want. Right now, the text orientation is going upwards and I want it going to the sides if I was going to be viewing it on this surface over here. And so instead you can use the text rotation drop down menu to see if 90 degrees would be correct. Nope, that's not what I want. I can guess that I would really want 270 but let's take a look at 180 and again 270 and if necessary you could type in a different value to use in here. So for example maybe I wanted to use 315 and that way it is at an angle 315 degrees from the initial orientation. But again, let's go back to 270 and that's how I want my annotations to appear on this plane. And so for the moment, let's click the OK button. And I'm just going to show you what would happen if I created a, an unattached note. And here we have our node, I'm just saying angle plane. And you can see that it's created in the plane of our annotation plane. If I were to create an annotation for a dimension though, it might not necessarily be on this plane. It would be located based on the first reference used to create the dimension. And here you'll notice that we have the annotation plane listed in our gallery. I can right click on it and choose edit to get back to the annotation plane dialog box. Here we have an option to freeze the annotation plane reference. And what this will do is that it will make the annotation plane always located in this place in the model uh, and not necessarily dependent on this reference plane if something happened to that surface that the reference plane would end up going away. And using frozen is a good option, especially for user defined features and data sharing features so that you don't need to include that surface in the data sharing feature or if you're using a datum plane to define it in a user defined feature, you wouldn't have to include the datum plane in there. So freeze will help make your annotations a little more stable. Here is an option where you could have the annotations forced to be on the reference plane as opposed to being driven by the first selected reference for the annotation. So this is good for this one. Uh, I didn't actually change anything so I can click the cancel button to get out of here. Let's take a look at a, another example and this time I will right click over on one of these and choose new to create a second one and for the second one 
I do have another angled surface in here. So let's use, oh, maybe that surface is actually curved. Let's use this surface instead as our annotation plane reference. And again, you can see the blue arrow and the red arrow. In this case, I like the viewing direction, but for the text rotation, let's try 90 degrees. Yeah, 90 degrees is what I want in this particular situation. And that way we can click the OK button. And so now we have a, another annotation plane defined. All right, there's some other things that I want to know, just a, a couple things about flat to screen annotations. Again, usually I make them as unattached notes, but you could actually do it as attached to geometry. And quite honestly, I'm not sure why you would want to do this, but I just want to mention that it is available. So for example, if I go to the annotations plane overflow and go to annotation plane manager, let's create a new annotation plane. And this one I can choose as flat to screen. And the default for flat to screen ones based on the one that comes from the model is by using a screen location. Again, you just click where you want it to appear in the graphics area but you could also have it based on a geometry location and by default the text height is in the model units and what that means is that you'll get your dashboard when you go to create an annotation and the size of the annotation is based on a number you specify that is in the actual units of the model, if it's millimeters or inches or whatever length unit that you have set. And so in this particular case, let me change the text rotation to zero and then click the OK button. And now when I have, let's close out of here, when I have my new annotation plane active for creating annotations, let's say instead that I'm going to create an on item note and I'm going to select an entity in here. And now we can create our note. And again, not feeling original, so I'm just going to call it on item note. And here's the text height. It's in 0.5 based on my model units, which I believe are inches. And so now I will deselect. And there I have my flat to screen note. And what you'll notice is, is that the flat to screen note moves around with the model inside of here. And also, if I hold down the shift key and middle mouse button, it pans with the model as well. Let's go back to the annotation plane manager because I do want to show one other one for flat to screen. If you uncheck this box here for text height in model units, then the text height is initially going to be a default value, I believe, of 3.5 millimeters. And don't ask me why they chose that one. So again, click OK and close out of here and annotation plane 4 is now active and in this particular situation again if I did a flat to screen note and then clicked on a reference in here it's showing up as much smaller and let's just type in text in here and then you can go and change that default value let's make this a value of say 30 Oops, there it is. There's the default value of 3.5. Let's change this to 30. And now it is much bigger. And again, we have that flat to screen note that rotates around with the model but stays flat to screen. Again, maybe you might have a use for that, but it's just something to consider. And so with that, you know you now know how to create annotation planes for later on doing model-based definition entities like dimensions, geometric tolerances, notes, etc. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.